Partners in Ministry, a presentation of Josiah White's Quakerdale Foundation, dedicated to growing ministry support networks, introducing people to a cause that connects with their heart, bringing hope and encouragement to our communities as we seek together to serve as Christ serves. Welcome to Partners in Ministry. My name is Dan Smith, and today I'll be talking with Ryan Keller, the Executive Director of Hope for Healing Resource Assistance Network. In this interview, we're going to be discussing resource partners. Welcome, Ryan, and thanks for joining me today. It's good to be back with you again. Thank you. As we all know, the Hope for Healing Resources Assistance Network has been connecting people with the resources they need all across the state of Iowa since 2014. Now, previously, we talked about friendship or church partners. Can you just take a minute to recap what a friendship or church partner is and the role that they play in the network? Sure. So a, a friendship partner is somebody from a local church who uh, has an interest in reaching out to individuals who have contacted Hope for Healing with a need and to just start that friendship with them, to provide a little bit of emotional, spiritual, or friendship support. Okay. And that's either an individual or an individual from a church, but it's it's, it's associated with a, a church. Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, let's take a look now at another one of your components to the network, and they're called resource partners. Uh, what is a resource partner? In some respects, that's a that's a big title and, and kind of complicated, but at the at the base of it, it's any business or, or agency or organization that provides a service or a product to a community that we can make referrals to if it helps fill the need of a person who's contacted the network. Okay. That is pretty wide open. So it basically covers just about, about anything and everything that's out there, really. Correct. So what role do they play then within the network itself? So they can make, you know, if they have a, a person, a customer that comes in who needs help, they can make referrals back to Hope for Healing if they need help finding a resource for this individual. But the primary goal is for them to do their normal business as usual, but provide us with a description of what their services or goods are that we can have on the network so that when we're resourcing or, or researching, excuse me, the need, we have a, the ability to make a quick identification of appropriate, um, again, businesses, organizations, agencies that can meet that need and we can make referrals to them. Well, it sounds like they play a really important part in the whole network because without resource partners, you probably don't have resources. Is that? That's correct. correct. Yeah. We don't really do what we can do if there's not resources out there to fit the need. So they are a big and very important part of what we do. And so it's not necessarily just a thing or cash, but it could also be a service. I think you said it could be uh, helping out with bookkeeping or helping out with filling taxes or mowing a lawn or transportation or you name it, uh, any right. way that somebody could use some assistance and they're available. Um, that That is what a resource partner is. Right. So we've had people who've contacted us that um, on behalf of their church or on behalf of a community organization, do transports for individuals that need medical care or mental health services, but don't drive for themselves. Um, we've even had at times some teams, football teams or basketball teams or whatever, volunteer to, uh, if we identify people who need snow removal on their sidewalks and driveways, that the team will come out and you can imagine football team full of guys or yeah. you know, a volleyball team full of uh, gals can come out and clear an area pretty quickly if they're all working together. So it just really depends on um, what's available in each area. But uh, we find a lot of those resource partners that are not maybe well known. They're not, uh, you know, your big eight businesses. We know them, of course, because they're well advertised. We just seem to have the ability to connect well with also the ones that are um, unknown, and, and they can bring services that oftentimes fill gaps. 
Sure. Okay. So if I decided that I wanted to uh, offer, I, I like to coach baseball. So let's say that I wanted to help coach uh, maybe a, a couple of kids from a single mom or something like that. Uh, what I would do is contact you to get that resource listed on your network. But just because I'm listed doesn't mean I have to. It just means it's there. And then you're going to connect me with an opportunity and I can say yes or no one way or the other. Correct. So the way we handle resource is that people need is we actually reach out to our resource partner before we make the referral. Okay. Um, so let's just use a cash example. Let's say you are uh, an organization that helps individuals pay their utility bills. Um, we don't want to just send somebody to you and your money for the month mm-hmm. is already gone. So we do what we call pre-qualifying. So that's just a, an email or, or typically a phone call to that resource partner and saying, here's what we've got going on. Do you feel like this is a good fit? If they say yes, then we include that in the, the recommendations or referrals okay. we're making to the person in need. All right. So how do these resource partners then function in conjunction with your friendship or your church partners? So we will share the resource partners, the ref- those referrals with the friendship partner from the church. And then that friendship partner from the church will communicate that with the person or family in need and help orchestrate that connect. So we get all the information from our resource partner that's necessary. We even will get like if there's an application or types of um, IDs or something that need to be brought in, we'll find that out, communicate that with the friendship church partner, and then they communicate that to the person in need. Okay. Well, it sounds like there's a good level of anonymity at a certain point of this thing before I actually make a commitment to do something. So um, there isn't just going to be this deluge of, of people knocking at my door for this or that or the other thing. The Really, the person in need really isn't going to know about who that resource partner is until um, after I've said, yes, I'm available. And then I make arrangements for how I want to be connected, whether I want to deliver it directly to the person in need or whether I want to deliver it through the re- through the friendship partner, right? Correct. That's exactly right. Okay. Great. That's right. So who can be a resource partner? Give us, give us some examples. Literally anybody. Um, so, I mean, there, there may be individuals we we've had needs in uh, different parts of the state where like a ramp needed to be built for somebody. Mm. And so uh, sometimes what we find is that the friendship partner church has a group of people within the church. Uh-huh. that's like, Hey, we can do that. We can build the ramp. And then they're, kind of so excited about what they were able to accomplish, they join the network as a resource partner as well to say, you know, contact us. And if we can help in certain situations, we will. Um, But, you know, if you have any type of service that you provide, so you said it before, lawn mowing, um, or if we're looking at moving snow, which is a little bit more common this time of year. Um, If you do taxes, anything along the lines of a business or service, a good that you provide can be listed on the network. Okay. Um, To the point even that sometimes we can post job openings on the network if you um, would like us to do that. Wow. So let's say that I am an organization or individual and uh, I'm thinking, but yeah, this is a great thing to be a part of. What would be my first step towards becoming a resource partner with you? Uh, reaching out to Hope for Healing and letting us know that you have that interest. And then when you call us, um, more than likely you're going to get somebody on the phone immediately. And that person will be able to take down your information and start the process of putting you into our database. From there, they will send you a specific username and password that you can go in and um, verify that everything is accurate. Um, but then you can also add or delete resources as things change for you over time as well. Okay. So it, it allows me to go ahead and kind of tweak maybe what resources are or not available. Uh, I may, let's say I'm going on vacation. I've got a way to mark that I'm not available, so I won't be connected. Is there, is that built into it too? That is correct. Yes. Okay. All right. We will also provide you with some of our contact cards so that if you have individuals that you interact with who could use a little extra assistance that they can reach out to us. 
Yeah. I know so many times when I was pastoring, I'd hear about people that were, oh, maybe in the bank or at city hall, uh, some of these places where um, it's pretty common for people that coming in might be struggling with this or that or the other thing. It was really handy to be able to put some of those cards, like you said, just in a little little stand on the counter and or in the desk drawer and talking with somebody, you discover, you know what, they could probably you, you can just hand one of those cards to them and then they can initiate that process and and, a, and away it goes, it sounds like. Correct. Yes, that's great. So here's kind of what I understand at this particular point. Um, someone in my community has a need. Um, their emotional needs can be met through a friendship or a church partner. Their resource needs can be met through a resource partner. And it's the network's job to connect the resource to the person in need, but through the friendship or church partner. Correct. Well, it, it sounds to me like Hope for Healing is more than just a, a, a network of resources. It also sounds to me like you're kind of creating a, a support community. Uh, for that person in need. That's how we view it, certainly. And, you know, we take the pressure off the resource partner to have to necessarily go out and find these individuals. Um, when they're coming to us, we provide that, you know, automatic leeway to make that referral. We take the pressure off of churches a lot of times to know, well, what do I do? How do I help in this situation? We can we can help with that. And, and I think even more amazing about all of that is because of um, – the opportunities that we have through um, places like the foundation who have helped to uh, support us, there is no charge to the resource partner or the friendship partner to be a part of this. Mm. It's uh, really is an easy way. There's, I can't think of a good reason why um, somebody wouldn't want to be a resource partner because it will only help to increase their opportunities to serve or to have business versus um, you know, missing out on those opportunities. Well, thank you much, Ryan. That really helps uh, me better understand a lot of what the network does. And I want to thank you guys for joining me today. If you've got any questions or if you'd like to learn more about Hope for Healing, you can see their contact information right here on the screen, or you can find it in the show sheet that accompanied the, this video. So thanks for joining me. And until next time, let's get out there and serve as Christ serves. This has been a presentation of Partners in Ministry, a podcast of Josiah White's Quakerdale Foundation. To learn more and see the show notes for this and other episodes, visit our website. To stay informed of up and coming broadcasts, subscribe to our e-newsletter. To invest in our mission, donate today.